Welcome for turning into our channel at Joe's Fat Kennedy TV as we take on today's Seed of Destiny written by Dr. Pastor Paul Inench. Let's read and pray along. First time it occurred to me that as association is a foundation for acceleration. Who you walk with will determine how far you can run. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. He that moveth with runners shall run. If you are accompanying with settled people, you will be settled. If you keep the company of settled people, you will be settled. If you keep the company of seated people, you will be sitting. If you keep the company of crawlers, you will be crawling. And you will think you are succeeding because every other person around you is crawling. You keep the company of workers, you will be walking. But just keep the company of runners, you will run. And keep the company of flyers. Hey! Seed of Destiny written by the senior pastor of Junamis International Gospel Center, Dr. Paul Anenche. Monday, the 21st of October, 2024. Today's topic, the character T-R-A-N-S-F-R-O-M-I-N-G power of prayer. Today's scripture, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. Luke chapter 9 verse 29. Hallelujah. Our thought for the day, prayer molds a person's character. It has been established that there is a relationship between prayer and character. Prayerlessness equals characterlessness. When you see a person of prayer, you have also seen a person of character. And when you see a prayerless person, in all likelihood, he will be characterless. This is because prayer molds a person's character. Concerning Jesus Christ, Luke chapter 9 verse 29 says, And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. The implication of this is that the place of prayer is a place of character transformation. As we approach God at the place of prayer, we are changed into his nature. As we associate with him, we are changed into his likeness. As we behold him, we are changed into his nature. Physically, when you get close to a person and associate with them, you will discover that after a while, that person's character begins to influence you. This is why two friends begin to talk alike, joke alike, smile alike with time. The same goes with couples, husband and wife begin to talk alike, behave alike, and even look alike, because of companionship. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 says, But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Beloved, understand that character transformation happens at the place of prayer. Character refining happens at the place of prayer. Iniquity is purged away when you tarry in God's presence at the place of prayer. Today, I release on you the grace for consistent prayer for the transformation of your life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember this, prayer molds a person's character. Take this assignment with you. Number 1. Make up your mind to live a life of prayer without ceasing. Number 2. Ask God to impart you with his nature as you live a consistent prayer life. Yes sir, our prayer today, Father, I receive the grace to persist in prayer. I receive the impartation of your nature as I pray fervently and consistently, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. For further understanding, get this message, prayer and character. Quote, guilt is a killer of faith. When you are tainted with guilt, there are times you will want to make certain decrees and the devil will say, shut up. Remember what you did last time. Culled from the book, 15 Kingdom Strategies for Survival, by Dr. Paul Anenche. Today's daily reading, from the book of Luke chapter 1 to 3. We start with Luke chapter 1, inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the division of Abijah. 
his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was, that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord the God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias, and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. So it was, as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed to his own house. Now after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me, in the days when he looked on me, to take away my reproach among people. Now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you, blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Highest will overshadow you, therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth your relative has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, to a city of Judah, and it happened, when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Saviour. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, 
for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant, for behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones, and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months, and returned to her house. Now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was, on the eighth day, that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father, what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet, and wrote, saying, His name is John. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God. Then fear came on all who dwelt around them, and all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit, and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for you and the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. A new child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people be the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So the child grew and became strong in spirit, and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2 and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was, that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, 
they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told them. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against, yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity, and this woman was a widow of about eighty-four years, who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant she gave thanks to the Lord, and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it, but supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey, and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and was subject to them, but his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and men. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 3, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, while Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, the word of God came to John the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip tetrarch of Iturea and the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias tetrarch of Abilene, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, a uh, wife, who was with child. So it was, that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, brood of vipers. 
who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none, and he who has food, let him do likewise. Then tax collectors also came to be baptized, and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed for you. Likewise the soldiers asked him, saying, And what shall we do? So he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely, and be content with your wages. Now as the people were in expectation, and all reasoned in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not, John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor, and gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. But Herod the Tetrarch, being rebuked by him concerning Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, and with many other exhortations he preached to the people, also added this, above all, that he shut John up in prison. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized, and while he prayed, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about thirty years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janna, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathia, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Marth, the son of Mattathia, the son of Semei, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Joannes, the son of Ressa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adi, the son of Kosum, the son of Elmodom, the son of Ur, the son of Jose, the son of Eliezer, the son of Joram, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonan, the son of Eliakim, the son of Jesse, the son of Obd, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashon, the son of Meli, the son of Manan, the son of Mattatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Amminadab, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serig, the son of Reu, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxid, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Anosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Hallelujah! Amazing fact! The longest nerve of the body runs from the spinal cord to the toes of the body. This is known as the sciatic nerve. Today's prophetic word and declaration receive the fresh baptism of the spirit of prayer today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any time, any situation of life is affecting your prayer life, that is your relationship with God that is under attack. Whatever does not want you to pray, I'm tired of, I'm tired. All this while I've been praying. Or in fact, maybe you have become so successful that you cannot, you cannot pray as you used to pray anymore. That when the struggle was much, the prayer was high. But now you have started counting billions and you can no longer pray. That is a state of emergency. Before the devil destroys a person's physical life, he will destroy their spiritual life. Because the spiritual is the sustainer of the physical or the material. If ever you love your relationship with God and you love 
you love your spiritual life and spirituality don't play with your prayer life at this moment in the name that is above every name that by the release of this oil this anointing you are released into enlargement the single shall enlarge into the married life the marriage shall be enlarged unto fruitfulness businesses shall expand across the country and beyond the country your influence shall extend beyond where it is now in jesus name.